Hello everyone, this is Venus Brown, back with another reaction to The Crown. This is Season 6, Episode 6, called Ruritania. Sounds like a spinoff of Britannia? Is this another episode about a royal ship? I guess I can take a look at the description. It says, eager to improve the monarchy's public image, the Queen seeks out savvy statesman Tony Blair. But the Prime Minister's advice defies royal protocol. I do remember in the teaser trailer they said something about King Tony, so maybe something like that is coming up. Let's go ahead and take a look at the show. Coronation Day is upon us for the first time since 1953. Well, I don't imagine that would ever happen, has been especially not on a coronation. With concerts, the former queen is unlikely to attend the service. Ah, yeah, I was gonna say, not even on her coronation, which she would have been much younger, or his coronation, which she wasn't alive. But, but after almost 50 years on the throne, I think this is an imagining. It's and in with King Tony, King Tony. New Britain <laughs> as a new royal family. This is not Game of Thrones, even if we like to think it is. It's quite somebody's imagining here. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Queen's Imaginings. I was curious about a couple things that I had questioned on last episode, uh, both during my reaction and later on when I was thinking about it later. First, the opinion that the Queen had of the show when it was airing while she was alive. Because I thought I had seen somewhere that some of the royals had actually commented on shows that they had seen, but then after looking into it, it seems as though the Queen actually would not watch the show and had said that she actually refused to ever watch the show. I wouldn't blame her if she didn't. On the other hand, I also wouldn't blame her if she did. Like, if there was a show about me, whether I was a queen or not, I think I'd want to watch it. Just to know what the heck is in it, what people are seeing, and what people are saying. I can totally understand why somebody else might not. And especially with all the royal family goes through because of the press and because of this basically social celebrity status, whether they want that status or not. The other thing I looked into was the age of the princes, because I was quite confused when the next episode started right after Princess Diana had died in the previous episode. And it appeared that both boys had aged up. So I looked into it. And what I could gather is that the person that was playing Prince William refused to come back to the crown because of backlash from certain fans of the crown. It really irritates me that fans of a show cause such backlash that it disrupts the willingness of the actors to continue. And in some cases contributes to them outing themselves and various other things that I think are really negative for their life and for their future. Because stuff of this nature has happened previously in other shows, and so often it feels like the fans are just getting carried away. And not only that, sometimes they are stepping so far outside of what that show ever entailed in the first place. But that's kind of another matter, different point from multiple different shows. Just something I wanted to get off my chest. Because really, I think fans need to be a little more careful about how obnoxious they're being and how their behavior towards the actors that play these characters affects the real people that have to play them. Now, on to the other character. The character that plays Harry, from what I understand, the show producers wanted someone who looked a little bit older and more mature because they were going to be approaching more mature topics. And they felt that it would be easier on everyone if it was an older person or at least somebody who appeared to be older. 
But those are the reasons that I found on my brief search of why the characters for Harry and William were changed this last episode instead of, I don't know, maybe this episode or the next. All right, now let's get back to the show. Unifying national symbol in a way they used to see, well, me. Find out what seems to have gone wrong and how we could, I could do better. <laughs> the crown doesn't ask existential questions. Perhaps it should. Perhaps. It is interesting, though, all those episodes with the same idea, and now that it's a prime minister, she's willing to step in and do something. Strange. Interesting. Welcome, if you just like to find a seat anywhere you like. Mm. Focus groups. The British royal family. Yeah. <laughs> Followed by some, at times, spirited debate. Asked if they had failed the Princess of Wales as badly in death as in life, sobering 66%. I'm surprised it wasn't higher. To continue in its present form was just 10%. I'd like to propose my own survey. <sighs> Daft idea in the first place. Yeah, but I like focus groups. Have you learned nothing? Oh boy. Well, I think this one might be different. Very interesting, the different perspectives on the polls and focus groups. I, I agree when it comes to polls. Like, there's so many flaws with the whole thing. Because these political polls and stuff, they do tend to be so divisive. I've never liked those closed-ended questions are usually biased. The way that you answer and even the options that you can use to answer are usually biased. And they really only take this one snapshot of this one particular period in time and only of the, the people that you manage to get to answer the polls. I mean, the reality is you have a whole swath of people that will never answer those polls. And there's a big difference between the people that will answer those polls and the people that will never answer those polls. Uh, the one time that I was in a focus group, one of the things that I like, it was a kind of open session where you get the poll questions, but then you can kind of expand on that. You can explain the events that have gone on in your life that make you feel a certain way. My focus group was in education, so it's certainly a different thing, but it is nice to me to be able to expand on those answers. And I am a long-winded, talkative person. That may be very different from the majority of people, but that's how I feel. I, I also remember when I was in college that some of the teachers would get very frustrated about the polls that they would do at the end of each term. It may not be a good representation of the entirety of their class, but it is a good way to let those who have been part of that class say how they feel about how that class was done. And I would think the same should be said for living in countries and states and nations and communities that have these politicians that run them that are supposed to represent us and be able to say how we feel about them, how they're doing. Here's the introduction. And here it is, the introduction to the crown, season six. Remember, if you like this content, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't done it already, then click the subscribe. And if you would like more notifications later, you can click the little bell and click all. And here it comes, the crown. We hoped never to see war in Central Eastern Europe again in our lifetimes. And it has consequences for the whole world. Always does. To all of us who think this is a remote conflict and someone else's problem, if you value your freedom, you cannot remain neutral. Yep, I think that was a problem that we had both the major Gulf Wars. This attitude, like it was so, far away from us, so not part of our country and what we're going through, yet our soldiers are there, our people are dying, and it all affects all of us.
everywhere. The most sophisticated weaponry in the world, and it can't handle the weather. <laughs> President Clinton, a limited invasion of, he said, why put U.S. servicemen's lives at risk? But I won't give up, morally. The Women's Institute, and enthusiasm. Of course, the uncomplaining, hard-working country women of Middle England. You underestimate them at your peril. <laughs> it is interesting. They seem to be, like, doing a massive shift from this insisting on being unbiased and never stating an opinion and never being political to... Like, really going very political. I've been a member of the WI for longer than I've been Queen. <laughs> Remember how vital we were to the war effort, to hosting evacuees, the vitamin C deficiency. Imagine a city run by the WI. It would have the tidiest streets in Britain. <laughs> and we would take all the men's jobs. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Answer me this, Tony. Oh, please don't do the accent. Which he said. NATO's credibility is already a buzz. allowed to do the accent. I do it better. <laughs> Worried about it looking like another Vietnam with no political upside for him domestic. And if I remember correctly, one of Bill Clinton's big thing, it was one of the things that actually made me uh, kind of anti-Clinton at the second half of his presidency. I mean, I was in the military at the time, so the idea that he wanted to downsize us so much and close up so much was very frustrating, I think, for a lot of us. Difficult and sometimes irritating to find yourself the recipient of every demand, to be called upon in every crisis. And a lot of our people get very irritated about this, feeling like we have to be involved in every single everything everywhere in the world and especially when so much of our own country is just not right and i've heard this from a lot of people feeling like we put so much of our money into so many foreign things that it looks like the other parts of the world are not doing near as much stay please the very best of your nature you will find an ally right that's where I think we're wrong to want to like close our doors and shut off and be just our own country and take care of ourselves. You end up alienating your allies. You end up not having the allies that you need when you're unwilling to use diplomacy and allyship of other nations. But I do think we get too involved. There needs to be more balance. Nickname King Tony. <laughs> Uh, her nightmare. <laughs> Clinton is now considering ground war. <laughs> I don't imagine she's very happy about this, but... I hope you didn't slip. Ma'am. Walking on water. <laughs> <laughs> Walking on water. <laughs> Often our values and those of the country have not been perfectly aligned. Shown an uncanny ability to read the mood of the country, but what would you do? <laughs> if I were king. That smile looks so demented. <laughs> Seems to be a dangerous loss of judgment. Her chief advisor, actually, <laughs> constitutionally, I think you'll find he is. Yeah, constitution's important. Let's do the monarchy first, and then we can get round to prehistoric monument. <laughs> Yeah, I only remember Tony Blair generally. I really don't remember a lot of how he really was and what he really did. But I do remember his name. Like, he seemed popular or something. She knows that there has to be a change. It really is such a big shift from everything before this. Now, I don't know if this really was especially from the Queen, but on the show, being presented as being from the Queen. Hurtful and frivolous gossip. Really? I hadn't noticed. I hadn't noticed. Sarcasm. Another area is transparency. Total accountability. Yes, I think total accountability for all government entities, political entities, and royal entities is a good thing. In fact, this was something that me and my youngest kid were just talking about yesterday. So we were talking about when I originally got to Florida. 
I don't know if it was right away or if it was soon after I got here. They have these sunshine state laws, which basically are supposed to be to open up all of this stuff so that everyone in the public can see it, you know, figure out what's going on. Where's their money being spent? What is going on in the government? What are these politicians doing? What are they pushing, et cetera, et cetera. And it seems like when that started, it was very good and they seemed to really be doing that. And now I think those policies are still in place, yet it does not seem like those actions are really being taken seriously. Seems like there is a lot more closed offness and that bugs me. But I do feel like doing things like that is a sign of trust. It makes the people feel like they are better able to trust what politicians, the government, all their leaders are doing when they're very open about it. And when they are not, it makes us feel like we can't trust them. It also contributes to the spread of wild conspiracy theories, which I have a serious problem with. I don't want a bunch of wild fucking conspiracy theories. I think they cause a lot more problems than they help. And especially in this day and age with the way conspiracy theories have been used to basically arm certain groups and dismantle other groups, I, I don't like it. I, I find it appalling. Anyway, I just thought it was very interesting that this exact same topic that me and my kid had just had a conversation about is now being approached on here. And maybe that's where those policies came from. I do remember the Freedom of Information Act getting pushed and put through. I think that was significantly before the Sunshine Act, but that doesn't mean it didn't come from there. A lot of big change like that takes almost a decade to freaking really come to fruition, to really show whether it's going to work and how it's going to work. So it wouldn't be surprising if it did come from that. Lord seems to be going to hell in a handbasket. I'm really sick and tired of their politics, and it makes me really want to leave our politicians being so involved in changing the laws in our lives that they make it so that my kids can't get the fucking health care that they need and that other kids don't get the education they need to me is a huge problem. But I will jump off my soapbox for now. It just really pisses me off. Back to the show. It will be the disestablishment of the Church of England. These functions can be carried out by the Speaker of the House of Commons. Should the monarch be Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces? Again, they aren't in Sweden. A matter of pomp and splendor. Dear Murray, what about him? Yeah, she really looked like she was ready to do this when the episode started. Now she looks like she is not prepared for the answers she is getting. There hasn't been a royal barge since 1849. Has to oversee the swans. Prerogative right. But is that prerogative right? <laughs> oh, you can see she's getting fucked maintain their habitat. Are there humanitarian groups that take care of things like that? She does not look happy about this at all. Was your request, at least according to the show. A little frosty. You think? Preservation of the monarch is her life's work. Her whole life, and she is not young Don't at the point that you're in there. <laughs> they modernized, and the old guard's never forgiven them for it. Because they're the old guard. Mm. The Queen's herb straw. The Queen's Guide to the Suns. Yeoman of the Glass and China. I oversee stocks. This feels like where new people come into a company to start downsizing, which Keeper of the King's basically Swans. what it is. The white linen napkin. Yeah. I think stuff like this also, though, can give them a bigger appreciation for the work that other people do that they never even think about. For though we wish our splendor to be everlasting, no thing must remain of what is past. Ooh. It's so full of color and character. The purpose of the state opening is to humble the monarch. It doesn't immediately feel like a lesson in humility. Yeah, if it is a tradition about 
humility than... When they brush up against us, they want the magic. They want to feel like they've entered another world. But I do think there are ways to do it without so much pomp and circumstance, with less money, less pain for every single thing. To have a Republican White House? I see no reason not to be optimistic. Yeah, from what I remember, that was massive neoconservatism. Very pro-military action. For my first child, it was still custom to summon the Home Secretary to witness what is worth preserving and where to draw the line. Mm -hmm. Modernity is not always the answer. I feel like there should be a but, there should be some concession, because there should be flexibility. Problem is, I'm an old stick. I'd rather not change anything. <laughs> At least you're seeing that older ones before. They just... You get better advice than I could ever. I get to play more cricket. <laughs> now, it does seem like there have been multiple episodes where the crown seems to be unwilling to make certain changes. Yet at the end of the episode, almost every single one of these things eventually happened years later. I can't imagine it's all going to stay. Like, they're going to have to make changes, like the episode is talking about. Even if that's the main reason you're there, to have this stability and this tradition and this constance. But anyway, let's get back to the show and see if anything like that is said or stated. The Prime Minister has chosen to address the Women's Institute as part of his... Win over seemingly anyone. <laughs> I'm sure this will be no exception. <laughs> One of the things I noticed when they showed that uh, previous meeting from this group is that a lot of the women's groups that I've been in, you have these older women that have seen a different time. And then you have these younger women in the same group who have not been alive or they were very young in that part of history. And so they don't have the same attachment to it. And uh, that's kind of what it reminded me of, you know, hearing their stories about, oh, yes, we were around when this happened and when this happened. I, I do feel like it does give the rest of the group this um, better understanding of, hey, we are attached to these things of the past that maybe we need to let go of. But it did happen that influenced our lives in a certain way. And I don't know how they're going to react to this completely different person interjecting. Sometimes those meetings go very well in some of those groups. And sometimes not at all. So let's see what happens. Radical is not a word to be frightened of. It is a word to embrace. Yep. So in that audience, they are reacting how I have definitely action. seen okay. All right, so that was the end of episode six of The Crown season six. And it turned out not to be about a ship at all. Man, there was definitely like so much of a shift in behavior, at least in that episode, although it looked like she backed up a bit at the end because she was like, ah, too much change for me. And I did not see anything at the end saying that, oh, after so much time, certain things were changed. At least it seems like this new secretary is trying to make some changes, so I'm assuming that things have changed to an extent. It, it was very interesting to see this massive shift in her behavior during this episode compared to almost all the rest of the episodes. Um, and seeing how the women's group reacted to Tony Blair not surprising, a lot of the big groups that I've been in, church groups, women's groups, political groups, it seems like this kind of thing happens. Too many of them don't like change. They don't want change. They don't want ideals that are different from what their ideals are. And if that particular group has a certain set of ideals and you're going against them, then you get this kind of gridlock and anger and frustration and people walking out. So yeah, not really surprising that when he went that way, that is how they were. I think it was one of the frustrations that we had in our church. A lot of the people in the church are older. 
and they're more conservative and they want things to stay a certain way. I always felt like a lot of the reason that we were not able to keep the membership up and stuff like that is because of this unwillingness to change, unwillingness to bend, gridlock every time anybody tried to make a shift or change with any group, with any political party, with any religion, with any government entity, things change. And if they don't change, you start getting pushback. But even when things do change, you start getting pushback. It's that push and pull of both sides. Traditional, progressive, traditional, progressive. Anyway, that's all I got for you this week. I will see you next week. Until next time, I'll see you when I see you. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you want more content, click subscribe. If you click that little bell and click all, then you'll get more content notifications.